Mike Affronti and Sean McGill have done a great job, the shortstop and catching respectively. Hog here, it brings a tear to my eye, or maybe that's just the humidity. Anyhow, Nick, um... That's in there, called third strike. Swing and a miss, strike three. In time, he oh, got him. double play on that one. So, a strike him out, throw him out, double play. Be heating up a little. Perhaps if the score Might be seeing a bench-clearing brawl one of these, uh, the one oh. Swing and a drive, deep to left field. Way back, where he's being waved home. Oh, my goodness, that's a great catch if I ever saw one. On the first double play. That is, look out, and the goals lead it 10 to one. And here's the throw to the plate. He got him yes. in time. Goals come into this game leading the NECBL Southern Division. Yes. There's a ground And ball. that one is balls in for a hit. Of course, this is baseball, as we know. Anything can happen, and it's not over till it's over. He's ready now. The one-two pitch. Sets, kicks, in, deals. Swing, and a miss, strike three. And this ball game is over. It's a second out there on the first double play. What a catch. One run will score. Here's the throw to the plate. It is... Down in line. And it looks like they're trying to the suicide squeeze, and it works. At a deep left field, way back, way back. Sends that ball to the light tower. A high fly ball. Deep to left field, way back. Swing and a shot. Deep to left field. Swing and a high fly ball. Deep to center field, way back. Home run, three run home run. Short stop has it, puts the second out there. The first double play. Here it comes, Lock. He will score. Swing and a line drive, base hit to left field. Stands it, stand around the first, running second, all the way to third. Here's the throw to the plate. It is not in time. Swing and he strikes him out. Here's the 0-2. Swing and a miss, strike three. Call third strike. Swing and a miss, strike three. Swing and a miss. Swing and a miss, strike three. So long, everybody. Thank you. 
Stand by. We're about to go in, all right? Stand by. Our calling ball and strikes, Scott Davis. And on the bases, Tom Mish. <laughs> Everybody. Welcome here to Cardinesville and Newport, where tonight the Newport Gulls will be starting a one-game homestand against the Lowell Mill City All-Americans. Leading off tonight for the All-Americans will be the shortstop, Michael Parker. Parker, followed with Parker, will be Alex Manessas, the right fielder. After Alex, you'll see Emmanuel Paul, the third baseman. The designated hitter, Cesar Aranguruan, bats fourth. And you see a picture by a camera guy there. What's he doing? Ryan! Ryan! The game! The ball, all volunteer crew. He's looking into the camera. <laughs> all right, Tommy, you want to start this again? Welcome here to tonight to Cardings Field, ladies and gentlemen. But tonight, the Newport Gulls will be starting one game homestand against the Lowell Mill City All Americans. Leading off for the All Americans will be the shortstop, Michael Parker. After Parker, we'll see Alex Massis, the right fielder, batting third, and Emmanuel Paul on the third baseman. The short batting in Cleve, I should say, Cesar Aaron Garuin, the designated hitter, batting fifth will be Bobby Brown, the first baseman. After Brown, we'll see Edgar. Herrera, the left fielder, David Savard, the center fielder, Mark Brown, catcher, and Anthony Santos, the second baseman. For the home Newport goals, Steve Douglas is the center fielder, leading off for them, Michael Cardin, the shortstop, Sean McGill, the catcher, Blake Church, first baseman, Scott Brown, left fielder, batting sixth, Brian Jaronsinski, the right fielder, the designated hitter, Andy Wendell, bat seventh, and Juan Chaffin, third baseman, bat eight. Running out of the order for the Newport goals is Brandon Leonard, the second baseman. Starting pitcher tonight for Newport will be Paul Nandazi. Nandazi leading off the starting pitcher tonight for Newport. Pitches in the mid 80s, has a fastball, curveball, changeup. He has a good cutter, too. Nandazi stands in on the mound now, ready for the first pitch of the ball game. Here it is. Missing ball one, it's 0 and 1. Or one, rather, 1 and 0. A little bit of a rush start tonight, so we have a radio format. We just have one camera this evening for you folks, a small crew. Bring this game to you. The noisy's next delivery. Low and outside ball two, and the count is 2 0. Michael Parker, leadoff batter for the Mill City All Americans. He stands in, Nadazu's pitch. That's on the outside corner, just nipped it with a call strike. We also have a new location for him. Yours truly, Nick Lehman, the announcer tonight. We're sitting behind the backstop for the first time ever here at Cardinals Field. Nandazi with a 2 1. That's in there again, the same location. Strike two, the count's even at 2 and 2. After Parker, we'll see Alex Manessas and Emmanuel Paula. Paul Nandazi from Victor, New York. Looks in the pitch. Low and outside, ball three. All of his pitches have been outside this far. Nandazi doesn't like the pitch inside. Does have some mild power. The payoff pitch. Ball. Call. Third strike. Parker threw his ball four. However, home plate umpire Scott Davis says strike three. So a leadoff strikeout to start things off for the Newport Gulls here today defensively. Here comes Alex Manessis or Manessis. The public address announces interpretation of him. So pocket down looking is Manisi's. The pitch. Missing high, ball one, and it's one and oh. Church, first baseman, landed at second, and for any shortstop, Schaefer, the third baseman for the goals, is the pitch. Outside again, ball two, and the count is two and oh. In left field, it's Brown, center is Douglas, right field, Jaron Sinski. The catcher is Sean McGill, the pitch. That's in there with the call it's striking the counts two and one. About 77 degrees right now under partly cloudy skies. Temperature slowly dropping here in downtown Newport. Nodazi winds, kicks in, deals. Missing low and away. Ball three and it counts three and one. Hit his countdown for Manisi's. 
The next delivery is ball for a walk. Them. So there is a walk, a one-out walk. You shoot to Manises in the first base run of the night will be Alex. Here comes Emmanuel Poller. He'll be batting now with the go-ahead runner at first. Poller, third baseman for the Mill City All-Americans. Unfortunately, we don't have our graphics tonight. It's a smaller production than normal, so I'll be giving the score more often than not. Poller batting 250 coming into this game. Poller. As one hit, and that's a triple. Two runs batted in. A runner at first. Paula comes to the plate. The umpire's fourth tonight's game out, by the way. Scott Davis, calling balls and strikes, and Tom Mish is the base umpire. Paul Nadazi has one out, a runner on. His first pitch to Paula is missing load outside. Outside again, ball one. So, Nadazi keeping the pitches outside. Nadazi, a right handed pitcher. Stands tall on the mound. His next delivery. Swing and is a hot hit ball right to the second base. He flips the second out there on the first. Double play. And the inning is over. That's the kind of play the goals wanted to get. Had to start off this game. The Newport goals are 5 0 coming into this game and hope to continue their unbeaten season start streak as we continue next on the Newport Gulls Television Network. And now Cardiff Field, Stephen Douglas has hit the first pitch in the left field for a leadoff single. Douglas stands in at first. Michael Fonte comes to play to Fonte. Stands in the pitch. 
on the outside corner at the belt with the called strike. So Douglas on. Runner at first here in the last half of the first inning. The next pitch. Swing in the ground. Weak kick ground ball chopper. He does this and has it. Fires a long way to first. In time he got him. And now the ball gets away. And finally advancing to second. And we hold up there. And my apologies. Douglas was retired. Douglas was uh, retired on the flyout. As we gather our thoughts here. And a Franny on. At second base. So. We didn't. We'll call that an error. As the throw did get away from the first baseman in E3. And a Franny stands in at second. So the Gulls have their first potential runner of the day in scoring position. Douglas retired on the fly hard. Afrani in at second. One out. McGill at the plate. McGill back for a second season. The Newport Gulls, the pitch. That's on the outside corner with a called strike and it's 0 1. Sean McGill hit a three run home run in his Pierce of Bat back here at Cardings Field on opening night. Today, of course, is June 13th, 2005. Mill City All Americans out of Lowell, Mass against the Newport Gulls. Goals here for a one game home stand and playing nine games straight, home and away. The pitch outside, ball one, two, and the count's two and one. A little bit tough to see our scoreboard from here. Used to use that as a crutch when we were in our right field location. Daniel Black Hewitt, pitcher for the All Americans, the pitch. Swing and a hard hit ground ball chop. The second reason has it, fires the first in time, he got him. And Afrani advances the third and sacrifice. Two down now for Blake Church. Let's see if they play Church's music here. Blake Church has his own theme song when his name is called. We rearrange our microphone. Blake Church stands in from the right side of the plate. The pitch. Outside, ball one, it's one and oh. Afrani stands in at third. First potential runner for the Newport Gulls, 90 feet from the plate. Daniel Black Hewitt from the stretch to pitch. Missing again outside, ball two, it's two and oh. Black Hewitt has a fastball, curveball, changeup. Right handed pitcher, pitches in the low 90s from Texas. Pitch. That's on the outside corner, the called strike, counts two and one. Newport Gulls, 5-0 and oh, coming into this game tonight. Black Hewitt, again, from the stretch to pitch, swinging a weak hit ground ball foul around the play area. The catcher, Mark Brown, fielded it, handed it. However, it took a bounce first. It is Brown, the catcher, and Brown at first base. Santos, second baseman, Parker short. Follow the third baseman, and left it's Herrera. Savard in center, and Menesis in right. Daniel Black Hewitt looks in for the sign. From the stretch, the pitch. Yeah. On the outside corner, a called strike. McGill goes down looking. So the goal strand of Franny at third. One full here at Cardi's Field behind us. It's still no score here in the Newport Goals. Television Network. Second inning, 
Leadoff batter here in the inning for the Mill City All-Americans out of Lowell, Massachusetts, will be returning All-American Cesar Aaron Gruen. I had fun pronouncing his name last season. Hope to have more fun pronouncing it again this season. Aaron Gruen walks into the batter's box as starting pitcher for the Newport Colts, Paul Nadazi. Takes the last practice pitch. Again, a small crew on hand tonight. We tape a radio format and one camera game for you. Hope to have much larger productions in the future here on the NGTN. Now Darcy looks in for the sign from his catcher, Sean Miguel. Uh, first pitch of the inning is on the outside corner of the court, strike its own one. It'll be Aaron Guruin, Brown, and Herrera here in the second for the All-Americans. Now Darcy's 0-1 pitch. On the inside corner, there's an inside pitch. 0-2 to count now. To Cesar. Ball looks down, looks up, looks in. Winds and deals. That's way outside. And it counts one and two. Nandazi. Starter for the Newport Goals. He's 1-0 oh, as a 3.0 ERA. His next pitch. Missing up and away. Just missed. And it counts even at 2-2. Two and two. Outfield back, infield. Squared away. La 2-2. Two, two. Missing. With the ball and the count is full, three and two. Once that camera momentarily, or maybe that's just my own monitor. I'm not sure, folks. Again, a small production tonight. So I apologize in advance for any technical difficulties. The pitch. Swing and a hot hit ball to right field deep. Right field looking back, back of the wall. And leaps. Did he make the catch? No, he didn't. It was off the wall. And Cesar and Gruen is in the second of the double. He recovered quickly to throw that ball into the cutoff man and to hold Cesar. That ball is about hit maybe eight or 10 feet up the wall. Right fielder Jaron Sinski had to leap, unable to make the catch against the advertisements out there. And um, all Americans threatening here with nobody out or runner at second. The batter is the first baseman, number 24. Here comes Bobby Brown. Brown leading the all Americans in batting average, batting 500. Mill City has played the least amount of games in the NCBL to date. Mill City is 1-0 overall. They've had a rain out of two. And Darcy wearing by a runner at second from the set the pitch. That's in on the outside corner. The called strike to the lefty. Bobby Brown. Brown, first baseman for Mill City. Open and drive in the run here. No score here in the top of the second inning. And Darcy with the pitch. On the inside corner. Brown didn't like it. Nevertheless, the runner at second. Oh, and to the count to Bobby. And as he gets the signs from McGill. Infield takes a few steps back. The 0 2 pitch. Outside, ball one, and it's one and two. In a moment, we'll get you some more on the other action around the league today. Now time scored and Dazi steps off, steps back on the rubber. The one two pitch. Way outside of that one, ball two. That's with an off speed pitch. Salve Regina Newport night here at Cardines Field. Pretty good sized crowd, very good sized crowd on here already. Here in the second, at least 1,500. The next pitch. Missing ball three, the count once again is full. Now Darcy looks in for the sign. Checks the runner at second, Cesar. The full, the three two pitch is a call third strike on the inside corner. Bobby Brown walks away in disgust. He's down looking. 
That's the second strikeout tonight for Paul Nardazzi. So, that's the first out of the inning. Here comes Edgar Herrera. Herrera. Herrera, left fielder. For the All Americans, levels the bat, awaits the pitch from the Nardazzi. Working fairly quickly here in the second inning. No score, the pitch. Low and outside, ball one. Newport coming this game, 5-0. and oh. They've had one game, which went to extra innings, went to the 10th inning. It's about 11 o'clock at night, they had to call it, and it'll be made up later, continued from that point. The pitch out on the outside corner at the knees with a strike, and the count's even at 1-1. One and one. That game against the Danbury Westerners, I believe. I could be wrong, folks. Danbury's in second in the division, two and two. Manchester Silkworms, the two and three in the Southern Division. The pitch, that's missing outside with the ball, two and one. At the Manchester, it's the Pittsfield Dukes, who are also two and three. Followed by North Adams and Torrington, who are tied with one win, one, three losses apiece. Keene leads the Northern Division, followed by Mill City. Polio conquered Sanford and running out the divisions Vermont. The pitch, swing and a foul tip to the backstop. Just barely got a piece of that fastball and it counts even now at two and two. Who should I say remains even? Around the league today, Manchester's at Keene, seven o'clock start time, getting underway shortly. Torrington at North Adams, also seven o'clock start time. Not a lot of games today. Now does he continue to worry about a run at second? No score here in the top of the second inning. I need a drink of water, folks. The pitch. Ball three outside. The count is full. The U.S. Military All-Stars, based here at Naval Station Newport for the uh, Red, White, Blue Tour of New England over a two-week period. The All-Stars are at the Danbury Westerners playing exhibition game today. That game also starts at 7 p.m. That's it around the league today. The full, the three-two pitch is swung on and missed strike three. So, back-to-back -back strikeouts, one looking, one swinging for Nadazi here in the second. And just like that, there are two men down in the inning. The All-Americans not wanting to squander their leadoff double. Here comes the center field fielder, David Savard. Savard is a native here of Rhode Island. He gets a hometown chair, Savard. Attends the University of Rhode Island during the school year playing for the Lowell, Massachusetts, Mill City All-Americans. Nadazi with the pitch, swing and a foul off the screen. Good thing on camera position wasn't there. Again, a smaller production tonight, so we don't have that backstop camera for you. Oh, and won the count to Savard. Yesterday, Newport defeated the Pittsfield Dukes. They go 2-0 in the season series with them at Pittsfield, 6-4 last night, the final score. Around second, Texas lead the pitch. In the dirt, blocked by Miguel, and no one covering at second. As the runner, Aaron Gruen, was about 10 steps off the bag. Also in yesterday's action, Keene defeated Vermont 5-2. North Adams defeated the Manchester Superwins 14-1. Torrington over Danbury 8-2. And Holyoke blanked Sanford. Sanford shut off for the second time this season. 7-0 the score. 2-1 the count to Herrera, or rather Savard, I should say. So I'll lose my headset momentarily. The pitch is missing, ball three, and that count is full, three and two. Or I should say, a hit his count now, three and one. Well, I hope I didn't just break my headset there when I leaned over to check out the scoreboard. The pitch. Swinging a foul up the right field line near the scoreboard. Very small crew again here tonight. It's just myself, Nick Lemer, my brother Tom Lemer doing a great job directing and setting up all this equipment. Not all the equipment, but most of it for a pretty good TV production of a great Newport Gulls game. Ryan Bettencourt's on our camera tonight. The pitch, swinging a high fly ball Foul up the right field line. Lands on West Ball Ball Street. And the count is full, three and two. 
still getting accustomed to our position here in the backstop area. You know, normally used to being up in right field. Now does he checks Aaron Garoon at second, two outs to pitch. Ball four, he walked and missed outside with a changeup. Albert runs at first and second on second walk issued by Nadazi. We are here in the top of the second inning. Two outs, no score. Here comes Mark Brown. Brown, catcher for the All-Americans. Brown has a 0-0-0 ERA in one game played, as does the rest of his team, one game played. However, he does he has scored two runs. So he's been driven in a few times after walking. Now Darcy, where is about running the first and second? The pitch in there, a called strike right down the middle at, at the belt. Come on, Paul, end this inning so I can finally get a drink of water. Two men on, two out. The 0-1 pitch. Instead, Nadazi looks to run it back at second. So the Newport Gulls have a two and a half game lead over the second place Danbury Westerners. And a three game lead over Manchester and Pittsfield. Still early in the season, the pitch. Called strike on the outside corner and Brown in the hole now 0-2. Very good crowd on here already here at Cardiff's Field. Runners at first and second, two outs. Top of the second inning, deuces all wild. The 0-2 pitch from the Darcy, from the set, the pitch. High and inside ball one. Maybe we'll go see a 2-2 count. Then deuces will really be wild. Ball now Darcy. With the pitch, swung on and missed strike three. Three strikeouts in the inning, accounting for all three outs here in the second. We go to the last half of the second inning as the Mill City All Americans strand two. After one and a half, it's Newport Ladies nothing, the Mill City All Americans nothing here on the Newport Gulls Television Network. Field and the first pitch to Darren Sinski is lined up the left field line foul. In addition to doing your play by play tonight, folks, I'm also doing audio too, so sort of a multitasker here tonight. Jaron Sinski stands in the pitch. Outside ball one and the count's even out one and one. The next pitch is hit. In the air, foul off the top of the netting. Good bare handed catch made there by Andy Wendell in the on deck circle. Daniel, Daniel Black Hewitt, right handed pitcher from the stretch of pitch, swinging another ground ball chopper foul off the little bit of a backstop there in the left field line here at Cardine's Field. Again, one camera tonight, folks. Apologize for that. The pitch. Outside in the dirt, blocked by the catcher, Mark Brown. And I struggle to see the scoreboard to remind myself what the count is. Ironically, my own camera guy on top of the dugout Right field is staying in the way of the scoreboard. The pitch, swing and a hard hit ball in the center field. That ball will be caught by the center fielder, Savard, for the innings first out. That ball was fired off the bat of Jaron Sinski. However, it was right to Savard. And there is one man down the inning for Indy Wendell.
Wendell batting now. Here's the pitch. Outside ball one. From the stretch, the pitch, that pitch hit him, hit him on the right shoulder. So one out walk here for the Newport Gulls as Wendell's hit by a pitch. The third baseman, number two. Here comes Warren Schaefer. Schaefer batting here with once again, the goal's first potential runner at first. The pitch is on the outside corner, a called strike. Warren Schaefer coming into this game, batting to 0.59. He's made four starts for Newport. Goals have played five full games, including a sixth game, which is yet to appear on any of the stats. The pitch missing high and inside. Ball one, it's one and one. Black Hewitt. Let's pitch in the low 90s. We've seen some power from him here tonight. Fortunately, my co-announcer, Steve Wawanski, among the many crew members, unable to make it this evening. It's all volunteer crew. The pitch is fouled off back and out of play. So, um, a very short three-person crew bringing this game to you. We're doing the best we can. So we'll continue to do the best we can all season long here on the NGTN. Daniel Black Hewitt with the pitch. Swinging another foul. He just got a piece of it back and out of play. Well, it certainly is nice to actually have a, a good view of the batters for once since we are here in the backstop for the first time. Not only are we way up there in first base line and right field, so there must be a fire somewhere in Newport. The pitch. Called third strike. He struck him out. So that'll do it for the Newport Gulls. Here in the second inning, we go to the third. Still no score here on the Newport Gulls Television Network. Back here now at Cardinesville, we head to the top of the third inning. Leading off here for the Mill City All Americans will be Santos. First pitch to Santos is missing ball one. Santos stands in at the plate, levels the bat, awaits the next pitch from Manazi, who's working fairly quickly here in this game. A pitch outside, ball two, it's 2 0. Oh. Anthony Santos, second baseman for the All Americans. A pitch. That's in there, a called strike down the middle at the belt. And the count is two and one. Base is empty here in the top of the third. A leadoff battle looks in. The pitch is outside ball three. Hit his count now, three and one. Very odd location for the broadcast booth here. But we'll deal with it. The pitch is a hot hit ball foul up the right field line over the red field press box and out of play. Oh, such a small crew tonight. I do wish we were in that press box. We typically need a larger crew to make this location work correctly. However, we'll work with what we have, the pitch. In the dirt. He gets all the way to the backstop. That'll be a wild pitch. And Santos drops down the first. Wow, well, Paul Nadazi is really unhappy with with himself after that pitch. It looks like he took a, a bad turn off the mound and he fell to the ground after throwing the pitch. It hit in the grass about 10 feet in front of the mound. And he fell down, did a push up and stood back up. He catches Sean McGill and let's see who else that is. Looks like the pitching assistant, Josh Scott, out to talk with Nadazi right now and make sure he's all right. Looks like that one just got away from him. We'll see about that, though. Runner out first. Nobody out. Number five, Michael Parker. Here's Michael Parker, leadoff batter. 
Well, the All-Americans. Nobody out. The pitch is, well, he was looking for a bunch of the pitches high and outside the fastball, ball one. To Nandazi, not showing a great amount of command here. Does have three strikeouts, but he's walked three batters and given up a double. The All-Americans have grounded into a double play already in this game. They like one here, the, the goals are like one here. The pitch on the outside corner with the called strike. And it counts one and one. Need to remind myself not to overstretch my headphone wire looking at that scoreboard. I don't think I'll be getting any mozzarella sticks this evening and we don't have a crew running. The pitch as the runner does go and it's hit in the air to left field. That ball in right field. He's and the throw gets away all around. So that was hit the right field. That again, trying to get used to this new location here, folks. And now the All-Americans have two runners in scoring position. So very dangerous situation here for the goals. As Parker stands in at second. That pitch was hit up the right field line, got away from the cutoff man the right fielder, while going to third one. base and went to the backstop. No chance for the runners to advance. So it'll be Santos at third, Parker at second. Manises stands at the plate. Now Darcy with the pitch. Outside, ball one. Nobody out. Two runners in scoring position, two men on. Nardazzi looking in, the 1 0. Swing and a foul. Look out. All right, hits right above our location here behind the backstop. And the count's even out, 1 and 1. Not even much of a chance for a double play here. The goals will take what they can get. Base hit will not do it, though. Nadazi gets the size from McGill. Now he steps back off. McGill waved him off, just trying to mess up the timing of the batter. And is the pitch. That's missing again, ball two. So Nadazi having trouble pitching inside the batters. Here in the third, no score. The old American's threatening. A 2 1 pitch. Ball three outside. Hit his count now. Three and one. Very dangerous situation here. A walk with low the bases for the number three man, Paula. He don't want to do that here. Paula has two RBIs in one game. The pitch swinging a hot hit ball off the right field line. Foul. And out of play by the Munville Tavern, neighbor here of Cardines Field. They have some good seats down there. Restaurant seating. I don't know if they have to pay buy tickets. Well, the count's full, three and two. Two runners in scoring position. Here in the third, and still number the out. The three, two pitch. Swing and another foul ball back and out of play, about the same location. So we'll do it all again. Ball to Adazi. In a jam here. Payoff pitch is hit on the ground. The shortstop in front, he can't get the ball. It's off his glove, and everybody's safe and run scores. Franny had to charge that ball hard. It was off the mid of his glove and bounced to his left. And the score is 1-0 Mill City. Runners at the corners now with nobody out. The third baseman, number 28, Emmanuel Paula. Manuel Pollard comes to the plate, hoping to drive in another run for the All-Americans. The Gulls may sacrifice a run here for a double play. We'll see. The Gulls have been hitting. They score an average of five or six runs a game. The pitch is missing, ball one. Pollard has two runs batted in. Nice shot of the scoreboard there. Good job to our cameraman. 
making up for a lack of graphics tonight. Runners at the quarters of pitch. On the outside corner of the called strike. And it's even a one and one. Fowler batting 250. Thus far in the season, he's just played one game along with the rest of Mill City. The Gulls have played six games coming into tonight. The 1-1 one -one is hit in the air, foul and out of play. So I'll have to get used to these, this new angle calling foul balls here, folks, as I don't think every foul ball is either a base hit or a home run. New perspective. I'll get used to it over time. Now Darzi still worrying about runners at the quarters. One run home in the inning. The pitch, swing and a miss. Strike three, struck him out. That's the fifth strikeout already for now Darzi. That's another strikeout by the Newport Gallows. Third swinging. So finally we had the first out of the inning. Double play would do very nicely here. Still runners at the corners. Cesar Aaron Garuin comes to the plate, Cesar doubled his last time up. Cesar stands in. The pitch instead he steps off. Look at third and look at first. Neither runner had a very big lead. One nothing on a score. A weight half of the third inning. Mill City All-Americans versus the Newport Gulf, Cardinals Field, June 13, 2005. Now Dazi looks in for the sign. He's ready now from the set, the pitch. Swinging a weak round ball, right to Friday. Five seconds, out there on the first. There's the double play, the Newport Gulls get out of the inning. So one run scores, and the All-Americans take the lead, one nothing. We've played two and a half here at Cardinals Field, one nothing Mill City here on the Newport Gulls television network. here now at Cardine's Field. The, the pitch is in there, a called strike. And it counts one and one to Leonard. Brandon Leonard takes the next pitch, high and inside, the ball two, it's two and one. That's a whole different perspective announcing the game from this locale here behind the backstop, the pitch. Swinging a hot hit ball in right field. That ball will fall for hit by the diving right fielder. Leonard rounding first on his way to second. The throw in rounding second on the way to third. Here's the throw. It'll be not in time. No one there to cut it off. Leonard with a leadoff triple. That'll put the tying run on for the Newport Gulls. Well, Leonard. Getting it done here in the bottom of the order for the Newport Gulls. We cycle around to the top of the order in Stephen Douglas. Douglas, batting 261 coming in tonight's game. Douglas flew out his last time up. So, Leonard at third. Another triple this season for the Newport Gulls. They've had three thus far. 1-0 the count. And that pitch is outside, 2-0. Douglas does have some power. He has a double, five runs batted in, or rather, I should say, uh, I'm reading the wrong line, folks. Pitch, called strike in the outside corner, it's 2-1. Douglas has two runs batted in and does have a double, the pitch. That's hit in the air, deep to right field, way back it goes, it is off the wall, and a run scores. Oh, it's foul, it's foul, never mind. It looks like, I couldn't see from this location, folks. To me, it looked like it was off the wall, but apparently hit the warehouse 
ominously placed out there in right field. And it, by clock rules, any ball hit off that warehouse wall is a foul ball. So a foul ball, a long foul ball for Douglas. Counts even at two and two. Still a runner at third. A one nothing in our score. The Newport Gold's trail. The threading here. The pitch. That's line in the left field. That ball will fall for a hit. It'll go all the way to the wall. That throws into second as Douglas opens up, holds up at first with an RBI single. So he hit one hard to right. That didn't do it. So he hit one to left center this time. And the Newport Gold's have tied the score one apiece and it is a new ball game. Here comes Michael Afrani. It is at the shot of the scoreboard. 1-1 one, one our score here in the home half of the third. Afrani stands in the pitch. On the outside corner, called strike. Afrani leading the Newport Gulls with a 4.17 batting average. Reacher on error his last time up. Afrani has five runs batted in. Runner at first. That's the go-ahead run. The pitch. Swinging is another hot hit ball. Foul back and out of play. Afrani has the double. 10 hits on the season and through five games. Of course, this isn't, isn't counting that game yet to be completed, which was halted in extra innings. Black Hewitt giving up a run the spot in the inning. That pitch is hit hard back and out of play over the Newport Visitors Center. Michael Affronti has a walk. And has 24 at bats, more than any other goal. He is the, the number two man in the lineup. The delivery swing, and there's another foul back and out of play. Stayed alive. The count's 0 2 to Michael. Following back a lot of pitches here. Afrani can hit hard. It's a good base runner, too. Franny hasn't struck him out yet this season. Danger of doing so here, 0-2. Runner at first, the pitch from Black Hewitt. Swing and a miss, strike three. There's the first out of the inning. And there's the first strikeout for Franti. I shouldn't have jinxed them, folks. So runner remains at first now with one out. For Sean McGill. McGill. Advanced the runner his last time up on a ground out. The pitch, swinging a foul back and out of play. Daniel Black Hewitt stands in on the mound. It's like about six foot three or so. We don't have a line on him. He hasn't pitched yet this season. The pitch. That's high and away. There's the door to first. Not in time. And Farney hops back on the bag. Rather, Douglas, I should say. McGill. Lucky for her, his first hit of the night. Get something going for the goals here with one down. Black Hewitt. And the runner goes. And for now, Douglas caught a run down. They tag him out for the inning second out. Well, Douglas took off. Try to catch Black Hewitt sleeping, did not work. He casually flipped at the second baseman in a shortstop. Both of them were covering the bag at second. So now the bases are empty. Court stealing, rather foolish court stealing for Douglas. From the stretch of the pitch, outside ball one. So two men out in the inning. McGill batting here at the base is empty. 1-1 one, one our score. Last half of the third, the pitch. Swing and a line drive looper into center field. That ball will be caught. For the other, he ties his side. But the Newport Goals get one back and have tied it up here in the third. We go to the fourth inning. 1-1 one, one our score here in the Newport Goals. Television Network. Back in our Cardi's Fields, we head to the top of the fourth inning. Bobby Brown leading off here, batting from the left side of the plate for the All-Americans. The pitch from the Dazi swung on, fouled off the netting just above the screen. Bobby Brown came to this game batting 500. It's down a little bit now. Brown 
Struck out looking his last time up, Bobby Brown. First baseman for the All-Americans. Takes the pitch ball one, it's one and one. The next delivery. That's on the outside corner, the called strike. A crowd mic has some static on it. I'll put it up for you there. Doesn't sound too good, folks. So we'll correct that later. The pitch, swinging a follow tip around the plate area. And the count is one and two. Bobby Brown represents the go-ahead run for the All-Americans. Here in the top of the fourth, a 1-1 hour score. Now Darcy looks in. The pitch. Missing just outside. Ball two. The count's even at two and two. Well, they still haven't gotten that clock working on the scoreboard yet. That we'll see that this season. Well, I have my trusty watch. Here's the pitch. Swing and a miss. Strike three. At six strikeouts already for Nardazzi. Brown goes down swinging. Here comes Herrera. Edgar Herrera, left fielder for the All-Americans. Herrera, batting 250 with one hit. Herrera struck out swinging his last time up at bat. Batting here with bases empty, one out. Nardazzi winds, kicks and deals. In there, a call strike, it's 0-1. The next delivery, attempted bunt, there is, it's a good one, up the third base line. Third baseman charging hard to throw to first, not a time, gets away, goes to the backstop, he's advancing to second, there will be no throw, he'll hold up there. So, we'll see that, how that gets charged, perhaps it's a throwing error on the third baseman, Warren Schaefer. He threw it on a hop, had to make a very fast throw, and if it wasn't on target, it wasn't gonna get away. Oh, well, I'll give him an error. No benefit of the doubt there. So, a runner in scoring position with one man out. David Savard, center fielder out of URI. Runner at second, and does his pitch. Swing and a foul off the netting. So I'll extend a word down to the director's booth that they can get us a new mic cord for our crowd mic up here to the broadcast booth, where of course it's just me, so get rid of that static there. You hear on our crowd mic. Have that back for you hopefully soon. See how busy our director is. He should be too busy, he only has one camera to direct tonight. If you could run it up now, that would work. Hint, hint. Run around second. Now does he, with a long look in, now steps off. Savard, tired of waiting, had stepped out. Now he's ready, checks the runner at second. Thank you, as the mic court arrives, asking you will receive. The pitch is on the outside corner, a called strike. So I'll hook up that mic court. Get our crowd mic working again. Between innings, if I, if I have time. One one hour score here in the top of the fourth. Runner at second. The pitch to Savard, swing and a line drive the right field. That ball will fall for hit just by the right fielder. It'll go all in the wall on a bounce. And a run will score, two on our score as Savard holds up at second with a RBI double. Savard stands in at second base. And our score, two to one. That ball was hit not very hard, a looper in the right field. Jaron Sinski came on, tried to get a glove on it, and went right by him. And continued bouncing, bounced into the wall, back off on a hop, he fielded it, threw it in, not in time. So one run home in the inning, the pitch. Swing and a miss, strike one. To Brown, a mock Brown. Struck out, swinging his last time up. Brown standing in here, the runner at second, one out. The pitch. 
That's on the outside corner with a called strike. Hopefully this might court also doesn't have a hum on it. We'll see. I'm trying to get some new equipment here for the Tigers TV crew and the Newport Gold Television Network. Time called now by home plate umpire Scott Davis. It is Davis calling balls and strikes. Tom Mish around the bases. Savard stands in at second. Who doubled? At the plate is Brown, the pitch. Missing outside, ball one. I can barely see that scoreboard. I'm looking right through our camera guy. We'll have to move the camera next time we're in this location. Uh, the next delivery. Swing and a miss, strike three. Struck him out. Seven strikeouts already here in the fourth inning. For Nandazi, who's given up two runs. One of them earned. So we go to the bottom of the order. Now there's a running a new pitcher heading out to the bullpen. We'll get rid of who, who that is shortly. The pitch in there for a call strike to Santos, who walked his last time up. Anthony Santos has two runs scored thus far this season. Both of them in the Mill City Americans' only complete game. The pitch, swing and a miss, strike two. He's in a hole now, 0 2. So there is action up in the Gulf's bullpen. A runner at second. Two outs. And Dazi checks him around second. The 0 2 pitch. Just missed outside ball one. It's one and two. Looks like Jeremy Hall out of East Tennessee State. Heading out to the bullpen. Not sure who who's went with him. May have been Mike Marha, who is now back for his third year with the Gulls, back on the roster. The pitch. That goes to the backstop, pass ball, and the runner advances the third. So the All Americans now have another potential runner 90 feet from the plate. Two outs. And the count is now two and two. Santos stands at the plate, hoping to drive in another run for Mill City. Now does he hoping to retire the side here before any more damage is done. The pitch, swing and a foul, look out right towards me. It's good thing it's the screen in front of me, folks. Once again, I'm not used to being here in this um, backstop area. If, if that screen wasn't there, that pit ball would have been right at my head. Very hard hit. Runner at third. As I regain my composure, the 2-2. Two -two. Outside ball three, and the count is full. Well, folks, that scared the daylights out of me. Now Darcy looks in, a runner at third, two outs. One run home in the inning, two on our score. The payoff pitch. Swing and a high fly ball to right field. The first baseman now fading foul. He looks up, can't make the catch, and it's out of play. The wind pushed it. Wind blowing across Cardine's field in a varying directions between 5 and 15 miles per hour as the sun is setting. Lights will be coming on shortly. We'll do it again. Now Darcy looks in for the sign. Aunt Santos levels the bat. From the set, the 3-2 pitch. Ball four, he walked him. Runners at the corners now. And we'll cycle around to the top of the order. Michael Parker and Nandazi in a jam here. It is Jeremy Hall warming up in the bullpen for the Newport Gulls. I doubt we'll see him here. So Santos has two walks thus far tonight. Parker struck out looking in the first. In double in the third. The pitch. Outside, ball one. The runners are going. Here's the throw to second. He may be caught in the rundown. Yes, he is. Now back to third as they try the suicide squeeze. Doesn't work, and the runner advances to second. So no luck in tagging out any runners there. Well, two outs in the inning. They should have at least tried to get the, the, the first runner out. 
Savard, or ra rather Santos, who was at first. Now they have two runners in scoring position with two outs. Doesn't really matter. Hit will do it nonetheless. The pitch. Missing outside ball one, but considering the lack of control we've seen from the Dazi for the most part, and giving up some awkward hits. Well, not sure what the decision was there on the part of the infield. The pitch on the outside corner, about the same location with the strike, and the counts two and one. Two runners in scoring position, two one out score. Top of the fourth inning is dragging on. The pitch, swing and a ground ball chopper. First baseman has it, has to flip the pitcher at first in time. Got him by a step for the out there, he ties the side. And did a run score before he got the out? Yes, it did. So it's 3-1, 3-1 our score here at Cardines Field as the Mill City All-Americans out of Lowell, Massachusetts get two. 3-1. Oh, I'm sorry, it was 1-1, one, one. there we go, we checked the scoreboard again. 2-1 our score, one run home in the inning for the All-Americans. And we play three and, a, three and a half here at Cardines Field as Siegel passes over the park. Here on the Newport Coles Television Network. Back here now at Cardines Field, I just barely got that crowd mic set up in time. Let's see if it works. Now it's still a hum there, the pitch. On the outside corner, a called strike in the count one and one to Blake Church. Church leading it off here in the last half of the fourth inning. The pitch is outside, ball two. Out for another inning of work is Daniel Black Hewitt. Stands in at the mound. Looking in. The 2-1 pitch from the stretch. Swing and a line drive in the right field. That ball will be off the top of the wall and Church holding up at first with a wall ball single. A pitch was hit deep to center off the off the uh, vines out there just by the Newport Gulls banner. So Church represents the tying run at first and for the second inning in a row the Newport Gulls have their leadoff man on. The left fielder, number four, Scott Brown. Here comes Scott Brown. Brown with three Browns in the lineup tonight. The pitch. Up and away, ball one. Church wasn't going anywhere. Still have a hum in the mic there. I guess we can't do anything about that. The pitch. Missing with the ball. Oh, I could just drop it all together. Sounds pretty clear now. I am doing audio and announcing tonight, which is why I'm talking to myself, folks. Runner at first, the pitch. Swinging a hot hit ground ball right to the first base and fires the second out there on the first. Long way, didn't get him. As the throw was not handled by the pitcher, Black Hewitt. So Church retired and Brown reaches on the field his choice. Here comes Jiren Sinski, who flew out in for the second out in the second inning. Jiren Sinski stands in. From the set, Black Hewitt. Runner at first, the pitch. Time called as the, the delivery came in. Well, that one won't count. Black Hewitt has given up one run through the last three in a, three in, in the third innings. The pitch is missing with a ball. It's 1-0. Oh. It's free t-shirt tonight night here at Cardinals Field. About 500 lucky fans receive either medium or large t-shirts. Free adult t-shirt night. It's batting helmet night last Thursday. The last home game for the Ghosts. Tonight's Monday, June Thirteenth, two thousand five. The pitch goes to the backstop, fouled off the bat of Jaron Sinski. Brown retreats back to first. Tying run at first. Go ahead, run at the plate for the Newport Gulls here in the home half of the fourth inning. A pretty large crowd on here now at Cardines Field. 
The 1-1 one -one sits it toward the first, and Church dies back in. Plenty of time. Black Hewitt looks in for the sign from the set. Now, once again, a high throw, and the ball gets away. Brown advances into second. The throw into the second baseman not in time. So a wild throw to first and advances Brown, who stands in second. That's the tying run standing in there in the form of uh, Scott Brown. Brown out of the University of Rhode Island. Base stealing threat. Gets credit for one there. Runner in scoring position for Jaron Sinski, who's not batting too well so far this season. The pitch. Ball two in the dirt. Yeah, range around my scorecards. Jaron Sinski batting 200 and even 200 coming into the game tonight. As one run, two hits. Well, infield conference now. So the count two and one. It's been a long inning already here in the fourth inning. Long top of the inning, now long bottom of the inning. The goal's threatening. One out, runner at second. Brown looking to steal third. The pitch. Outside, ball three, and to hit his count now, three and one. Once again, Black Hewitt looks in, checks the runner at second. The 3 1 pitch, swing and a foul tip to the backstop. Counts three and two. At the Jarinsinski, we'll see Wendell and Schaefer. Daniel Black Hewitt looks in again. Now likes, the, likes what he sees, checks the runner at second, the payoff pitch. Ball four, low in the dirt, he walked him. And that'll put the go-ahead run on, run on for the Newport goals. Insurance comes to the plate in the form of Andy Wendell, designated hitter for Newport. A one out walk earned by Darren Sinski. Wendell. Wendell's average has dropped to 214 after hitting well in his first two game starts to start off the season. Pitches a called strike. Wendell has appeared in all five official games for the goals and made four starts. Two of those games I catch her. The pitch on the outside corner, I called strike during that time. The goals were missing an outfielder and Sean McGill, regular catcher back for the second season with the goals, had to fill in that left field. McGill is now the regular catcher. Wendell filling in at designated hitter is the backup catcher. Black Hewitt steps off the mound. One out, runners at first and second. Wendell in a hole now, 0 and 2. Black Hewitt checks the runner at second, the pitch. Swing and a foul around the plate area. I'll put the crowd mic back on. At least pick up something. Get the audience at home back into this game. S slowed down to a halt here in the fourth inning. It's been a long fourth inning now. Black Hewitt, once again, the 0-2 pitch. Ball one up high. It's one and two. It is Jaron Sitsky at first. And Brown reach a point of fielder's choice at second. The pitch. Swing and a miss, strike three, blew a fastball by him. A window is now 0 for 1 tonight. 
Here comes Warren Schaefer. Schaefer struck out looking to end the second inning. The third baseman. Owen Schaefer not fairly, fearing fairly Schaefer. well at the plate thus far for Newport. La pitch. On the outside corner, a call strike. Schaefer would like to break out of his slump here. With a base hit for Newport. Base hit would may do one or two things to tie the ball game or could very well load the bases with two outs. La pitch. On the outside corner, the call strike its own two. Schaefer needs to swing at a pitch every now and then. He's in the hole now. Runner at second, our runner at first. Two outs. Last half the fourth inning. Black Hewitt from the set, the 0 2. Ball one up high. It's one and two. Look in from Black Hewitt, checks the runner at second. Once again, the pitch. Swing in a hot hit ground ball. The second baseman has it. Should end the inning at first. And the Newport Gulls strain two base runners. We go to the fifth inning. It's 2-1 Mill City here on the Newport Gulls Television Network. Cardines Field, Manises, the leader off here for the All-Americans as we head into the top of the fifth inning. Men Alex Manises is one for one tonight, walked in the first, and an RBI single in the third. The the it's 2-1 Mill City in this rematch here at Cardines Field of last year's Top Over Services night team, which was our first full production of the Newport Gold Television Network. The Gulls have lost, lost that game, eight to six, the final. That was 2004. It's a whole new team now for Newport, with only three returning members of the lineup. Several returning for the All-Americans, including Aaron Garuin. The pitch of Manises outside the fastball, strike one. Not Ozzy. Looks in for the sign, now ready, the pitch. Swinging a foul up above us, off the netting. And the count's even at one and one. I'm hoping now those in switch uniform numbers. No, he is number 20, the pitch, swinging a Foul out of play. And the count is even at two and two. The crease in his uniform may look like he was wearing number 24 from my perspective. We had a new pitcher for the Newport Gulls. However, it is big 2 out, 2 0 out in the mound. The pitch called third strike. He struck him out. So another strike strikeout to lead off an inning for Nandazi. Paul. Now has, let's see, four, five, six, seven, eight strikeouts thus far in the game. He struck out a batter in every inning. Struck out the side in the second. And the lights are coming on here at Cardine's Field. Some cloud covering the area. There are scattered thunderstorms and rain showers. The pitch is a ground ball chop. It. Ronnie has it. Now Bob is the ball. He boots it. And he's on with a one out single. Emmanuel Paula, you know, sent the first pitch to Afronti, who came on to try and make the catch. Afronti disappointed with himself, very disappointed with himself. Regains his composure. Out there at short. He booted the ball. That's all right, Michael. Michael saved the game for Newport twice during the homestand last week with a walk-off base hit on Thursday night and a great cutoff throw on Wednesday to save the tying, to stop, to rather retire the, the uh, tying run at the plate to end the ball game on Wednesday night. Cesar Gruen stands in, doubled in the second, ground into a 6-4-3 double play his last time up. He'll be batting here with Pauler at first. 
Set to see a pitch as the Darcy holding Paula. Nari's ready to pitch. Way inside almost hit him as Cesar. A very short batter. He ducks out of the way. Almost over his head. The lights are on here at Cardines. Nadazi with another long look in. This game has slowed down since the fast pace of the first and second innings. The pitch is missing with the ball and it counts 2-0. The next delivery from Nardozzi. Instead, another throw to first, almost had him. Good camera work there by our great cameraman tonight. Ryan Benton caught the pitch. On the outside corner, the called strike. Aaron Garoon didn't like it. A R A N G U R A N. Oh, that's too many vowels for me, folks. I'll keep calling him Cesar. Had about five names for him last season. The pitch is on the outside corner. Called strikes, counting even at two and two to, Z to Cesar. Well, maybe not. It's tough to say two and Cesar back to back. Two Cesar. No co announcement tonight. Got to fill it time, folks. Runner at first, and he's continuing to be held by Nardazzi, who's throwing more pitches there than to the plate. Outfield fairly deep as the center field Douglas stretches out there. Paul with the 2 2. Outside ball three, and the count is full. In the bullpen for the Newport Gulls, looks like number 11 warming up. 11, I recognize that number from last season. Let's see who that is. We'll check in a moment after the 3-2 delivery. The runner goes. It's ball four. He walked him, so defensive indifference. Runners at first and second now. A one out walk for Paula. Well, we've seen several innings start off like this thus far tonight as Gully walks through the stands, waving at fans next to me. I have to get Gully on camera. Well, that's right, he doesn't talk. Wouldn't work tonight, folks. Maybe some other evening. We'll interview Gully. Brief conference out on the mound now. That is number 25, the pitching coach, Mike Coombs. I think Coombs may be filling in for t Coach Tommy Atkinson tonight. I am not sure if Coach Atkinson is here or not. I have not seen him. We'll have to find, get word on that later. Plate umpire, Scott Davis, coming out now to break this conference up. Well, several innings have started like this, as I said, for the Mill City All-Americans, and in two of those innings, they have scored a run. Mike Coombs talking things over with the home plate umpire, the veteran, former brewer, heads back. Avid baseball fellow. Runners at first and second, one out. A double play would work well for the goals here. We trail by one. 2 and a score here in the top of the fifth inning. Bobby Brown stands in the pitch, fouled out of play. And so in one. Brown, so for two tonight, struck out looking in the second, struck out swinging in the fourth. Two walks issued in the inning. For Nodazi, and both of those runners standing at second and first, respectively. The 0 1. In the dirt, skips away from McGill, who luckily fires his mask and fields it quickly. Good save there by Sean. Sean McGill, a native of Wakefield, Rhode Island, one of only two gulls who call the Ocean State their home. Runners at first and second, the 1 2. Ball. Now a strike call on the outside corner. 
rather, it's one and two. That was a one-one pitch. One and two the count to Bobby Brown. So trying to steal a moment to check my lineup. I believe it's Josh Leasy warming up in the bullpen for the goals. The one-two pitch in the dirt again, blocked by the catcher, Miguel. And the count is full. You don't want to load the bases here with one out. We'll have the makings of another devastating inning. Well, not another devastating inning. They've only scored one run in each of two innings. Well, another potential scoring inning, I should say, for the All-Americans. Newport trying to keep their unbeaten streak alive. They're 5-0 and oh to start off this season. The pitch. Ball for he walked them, and they'll load it up for Herrera, who struck out in the second, rejoin error in the fourth. Well, that's three straight walks for Nandazi. We may not see much more of him. Yes, yeah, struck out eight. He's given up two runs and has to worry. About runners at first and second here. My apology, folks. That was a strikeout. I don't know where my mind was. The pitch. On the outside corner with a ball. It's 1-0. and oh. So there are two men down in the inning as I gather my thoughts. I missed that one, folks. One is at first and second, the pitch. Swing and a miss, strike two, and the count's even at one and one. So Brown struck out. That's nine strikeouts for Nandazi. My apologies to him after I finished bashing him for his poor pitching. One is at first and second, two outs. Pitching fairly well. It's only given up two runs. The pitch on the outside corner, a called strike, and the count is one and two. Crowd looking for a strikeout. The lights are on fully here at Cardinals Field. We're in the top of the fifth inning. Newport goal is trailing it. Two to one. Now Darcy from the set, the well, one, two, outside ball, two, the throw to third. A great catch by the third baseman who saved that ball from going down the left field line. Third baseman Schaefer had to make a leaping catch to his left or rather to his right to keep McGill's off-target throw from going down the left field line. That would have been a run had that happened. So a great save there as both runners advance. Two runners in scoring position. Two outs. Two and two the count. Two. Herrera. Herrera. 0 for 1 tonight. Reach showing error his last time up. Struck out in the second. Herrera stands in. No Darcy with the 2-2 two -two pitch. Swing and a miss, he struck him out. Th once again, three strikeouts in an inning for Nadazi, who has 10 strikeouts on the game thus far. After a four and a half here at Cardinals Field in Newport, it's 2-1 Mill City here on the Newport Gulls Television Network. Back here now at Cardinals Field as he finished singing the YMCA out in the field. One of the many between any activities that keeps the crowd active here at Cardinals Field in Newport. A very good crowd on here tonight. I'll estimate 1,500. We'll get the official attendance report later. Daniel Black Hewitt out for another inning of work for the All-Americans. He's allowed just one run thus far in four innings of work. He'll be facing here in the home half of the fifth inning, Brandon Leonard. Leonard led off the inning with a triple in the third. He follows that pitch around the plate area. In a hole now, 0 1. Leonard hit the first pitch into right for a triple. Played scored. Counts one and one to Leonard. 
Leonard with his first year here at, at Cardenes Field in Newport with the goals from the stretch to pitch from Black Hewitt. In there, a call strike and the counts one and two. Can't tell from here if there's any action in the goals bullpen. I'll use my trusted binoculars in a moment as Leonard goes down swinging. Or I should say swings and misses that one. I need to stop looking through those binoculars when there's a pitch being thrown, folks. He does go down swinging. We circle around to the top of the order, Stephen Douglas. Douglas takes the first pitch. On the outside corner, a called strike. Douglas flew out in the first. And an RBI single in the third. That accounted for the Newport Gold's only, one, only run. Black Hewitt from the stretch of the 0-1 pitch. Ball one in the dirt and low and inside. One and one the count to Douglas. Steven coming, came into this game batting 261. A pitch, tented bunt, put down a good one. He will be safe at first. A little chopper bunt up the third base line, rode about halfway up the line. Stayed on the grass in the infield, and no one could get it in time. Douglas on with a one-out bunt single. Here comes Michael Affronti. Affronti reached your error in the first, struck out in the third. Affronti came into this game, leading the Newport goals in batting average, batting 417 in five games played. The pitch gets away from the plate area from the uh, catcher. Around, but not far enough for anybody to advance. It is Douglas at first. Afrani at the plate. What a no, the count to him. 2 1 our score here in the home half of the fifth. Newport goals have trailed the ball game all, all along since the second inning. The pitch swinging on we kick ground ball off the glove of the third baseman. It goes in left field. Douglas holding up at second and Afrani in at first. Third baseman Schaefer should have had that ball as a sharper right to him. Newport goals now have two men on with one out. So Franny reaches on never by an infield for the second time tonight. Here comes Sean McGill. Sean McGill returning for a second season here at Cardine's Field in Newport with the goals. And McGill, who homered in his first at bat on opening night here at Cardine's Field last week. That was a three-run shot in the first inning. The pitch to McGill. On the outside corner, a cold strike. Douglas at second, at fronty at first, McGill at the plate. He'd like to hit a three-run homer here to put in the Newport Gulls on top. Let's see if he can do it. Black Hewitt in a jam here in the fifth inning. He has a one-run advantage to work with. He steps off the rubber and stares Douglas back to the bag at second. Twilight is upon us here at Cardines. So once again, Douglas step, like Hewitt steps off, now looks in. No one holding, holding Douglas at second. A love pitch. Swing and a line drive. Beast hit in the left field. One run may score. Here's the throw. It is cut off. No one, no runs do score as the throw gets away from the catcher. And the bases are loaded with one out. Douglas thought about running through it, and then it was held up as left fielder Herrera came on quickly to recover that ball. The cutoff man, shortstop Parker, missed it. And McGill is on with a one-out single. Here comes Blake Church. Church struck out looking in the first, single his last time up in the fourth. There's his, his uh, Walker, Texas Rangers, Ranger theme. There's um, Douglas at third. It is Afrani at second. McGill at first. Church has his own music. Church batting with the bases loaded here to face Black Hewitt. And there will be action shortly in the bullpen for the Old Americans. From the stretch, the pitch. Swing and a ground ball chopper. He goes through the legs of the shortstop. A run scores. Two runs score. And the Newport Colts take the lead three to two. How about that, folks? Blake Church in at second. That ball went right through the legs of the shortstop Parker. 
Douglas and, uh, and Fournick came around the score, and then the Newport Gulls have taken the lead for the first time tonight, three to two. That gets some life into the crowd here at Cardines Field. Big conference on the mound now as there is action in the Mill City bullpen. Still two runners in scoring position with one out. This has the makings of a big inning for Newport. Here comes Gully. Right in front of me here in the press box. Well, this conference on the mound. Let's see if I can use my x-ray vision to see through the fences and try and get a, a jersey number on the action of the bullpen. No, there are way too many fences to look through. I got about five fences to look through here just to see the bullpen from this perspective. So I can't tell you exactly who it is warming up, but the all Americans do have action there. Here comes Scott Brown. Brown, over went tonight, reaching on a field of his choices the last time up. Flew out in the second, the pitch. Swing and a line drive to the center field. Way back, this ball is caught by the center fielder. A runner tagging and he will score. And the throw goes in the third. The Newport Gulls lead it four to two. Brown hit a ball deep to center field, and center fielder Savard made the catch on the warning track as Sean McGill came around to the score. Blake Church now standing in at third, and Brown at first. Or rather, Brown's out. He, Brown, the sacrifice fly. Here comes Jaron Sinski, who walked his last time up, flew out in the second. Jaron Sinski batting here with two outs and a runner at third. 4-2 our score. It's been a three-run inning for Newport. They finally started swinging the bats here in the fifth. The pitch on the outside corner, a close strike to Jaron Sinski. Brian Jaron Sinski, right fielder for the Newport Gulls. Batting 200 coming to the game tonight from the stretch. The pitch from Black Hewitt is missing outside with the ball. A one and one the count to Jaron Sinski. Runner at third. Two outs from the stretch of the 1-1 pitch. Swing and a pop-up. Second baseman calling, and he, now the right fielder came in to make the catch behind him. Pull the out there, he ties his side, but not before the Newport goals. Send seven men to the plate. Three of them score after five full at Cardings Field. The Newport Gulls are taking the lead 4-2 here on the Newport Gulls Television Network. Back here now at Cardines Field. Let's see. And we do have a new pitcher We're warming up on the mound for the Newport Gulls. It is number 11. That should be Josh Learcy and left unless they Switch your uniform numbers. I don't think they have. Lairsy. Will be a left-handed pitcher. And the new pitcher for the Gulls. We'll get you the totals or Nadazi later on. Josh Lairsy has a 12.15 ERA. He's 1-0. In three appearances, he has one save, pitched 6.2 innings, given up 13 hits, nine runs, all of them earned, walked four, struck out six. The first pitch is grounded up the middle, it throw to first, not in time, goes, gets away, and backed up by the second baseman who made a good play running in to back up that throw. Pitching for Newport, that was number 11, Josh. And it appears. From Georgia Southern University. That Savard is on with a leadoff infield single. Like no infield had a real chance to throw throw him out at first. Very weak hit ground ball, trickling up the line. It's Mark Brown. Brown stands in the pitch. Tempted bunt goes foul near our camera position. I don't know why, but our cameraman ducked away from the camera instead of protecting it. I, don't know. I think we need to train them better. Now he's doing a good job tonight. 
Runner at first, nobody out here in the top of the six, the pitch. Outside, ball one, he pulled the bat away, he was going to bunt again. One and one the count on uh, Mark Brown. Brown struck out both times up tonight. The pitch. Said throw back to first. And Savard dives back in. I believe David Savard is back for his second season with the All-Americans along with Cesar and Garuin. Can't confirm that, folks. I do recall his name, though. The pitch. Oh, now he's caught in a rundown. Here's the toss to second. In time, they got him. So, it does pay off as Savard now retired and the bases are empty. Here's the pitch. It's missing for a ball. It's two and one now to Brown. The scoreboard catches up. 2-1 is swung on and missed. Strike two. The count's even at two and two. Base is empty. Court stealing for Savard. Lercy, the lefty throws. Swing and a miss. Strike three. Blew a fastball splitter by him. And there are two outs here in the inning. Here comes Santos, Anthony Santos. Walked in the third, walked in the fourth. So, for, in other words, folks, he's 0 for 0 tonight with two walks. Another way to put it. Lacy throws in the pitch. Check swing. It's a called strike in the outside corner. It's 0 and 1. Lacy working very quickly out of the bullpen. The pitch almost hit him. And yeah, the curved inside, curveball, more than likely. And it counts one and one. And Josh Lassie has given up five doubles, a triple and a home run in three appearances. The pitch is swung on and missed. Strike two. Two outs. Base is empty here in the top six. Newport goals the lead, leading the ball game four to two. Lassie looks in for the sign. The pitch, swing and a miss, he struck him out. Back-to-back -back strikeouts for Josh Lissy. We go to the last half of the sixth inning. The Newport Gulls continue to lead it 4-2 to two as we continue on the second season of the Newport Gulls Television Network. Cardings Field, you hear the Olympic music there, reminding you that the Team USA game we played here at Cardings Field later this July, July 4th, in fact, and the Tigers TV crew and Newport County Television and the Newport Gold Television Network will join forces to bring that game to you. Andy Wendell sent, sent a pitch, first pitch of his at bat, foul to the right field, the next pitch, missing low ball one, sent it foul up into right field territory up the first base line. One and one the count to Wendell. Black Hewitt's pitch, swing and a ground ball right to the third base when he has it. Double clutches, fires the first in time. So Wendell retired on a ground out. One of very few we've seen this game, which has had just about everything thus far. The close game, 4-2, here in the home half of the sixth inning. Third baseman. Here comes Warren Schaefer. Schaefer is over two tonight. Struck out looking in the second ground out in the fourth. Takes the first pitch, ball one. Black Hewitt from the stretch of the pitch. Outside, ball two. It's 2 0. Schaefer has the worst batting average. For the Newport goals, hoping to break out of a slump here. The pitch, swing on a ground ball, chopper foul, caught by the Newport goals third base coach. Looks like it is Josh Smith, the third base coach. Now I don't believe Tommy Atkinson, manager, could make it tonight. I'm not sure why. We'll find out later, hopefully. From the stretch, the pitch, swing and a high fly ball, center field, center field. Uh, 
lines it up, makes the catch for the innings. Second out. So Schaefer is 0 for 3 tonight. Here comes Leonard. Brandon Leonard. Triple to lead off the third, later scored. Struck out in the fifth. Brandon stands in, waits the pitch from Black and here it is. Then the bunt, they pull it back away. It's called strike. Oh, and one the count now on Leonard. Outstanding crowd on here, here tonight, Cardines. A pitch swing and a foul back in our play. Not a sellout, but for early June, it's still pretty good. And almost mid June now, June 13th, 2005. Newport goals here for a one game homestand on Monday night at Cardines Field in Newport. Lights are on, sun has set. It's getting darker. The pitch swing and a foul, and that ball got caught right in the uh, right in the screen. And a small fan tries to break it out, now finally does. Pushes it out of the fence. I was, you can tell I was hit hard when the ball gets stuck in the chain link fence, the pitch. On the outside corner, a call strike, he struck him out. So very quick one, two, three inning for Black Hewitt here in the sixth. We go to the seventh inning, still 4-2 goals in the Newport Goals Television Network. Top of the seventh inning, seventh inning, Newport goals on top four to two. This summer in our city, in our house, the base, best of the best, lace them up here at Cardines Field in Newport. The 2005 NECBL All Star Game will be played here at Cardines Field this July. I'll make sure it'll be at that game. ESPN will be covering it, so the NGTN will not be able to cover that game. Once again, we cannot bring that game to you due to the exclusive rights ESPNU has over that game. Unfortunately, we can't bring that action. There will be a home run derby starting around noon. Later on in the evening, the All-Star Game will occur. We'll have more details on that. Big event for the NECBL and for the Newport Gold and Guardians Field and the entire city of Newport later this summer. The pitch to Parker is fouled up the third base line. Attempted, he had a bunt. Started to pull the back away, the bat away, and it trickled up the third base line, rolled foul halfway up the line as Schaefer stared at it. So Parker will have to retreat back to the plate area. Parker struck out looking in the first, doubled in the third inning, later scored, and ground out three to one in the fourth. It's one for three, the pitch swing and a Foul around the plate area. Then a hold now, 0 and 2. So, a lot of big events here happening at Cardinals Field this summer. In about three days, the military All Stars will be playing the Sunset League All Stars on June 16th. Of course, the Team USA exhibition game against the Newport Gulls this early July, and the Indians will be All Star game later. The pitch is swung on, fouled to the backstop, and he stayed alive. And of course, the Newport Gulls, who are right now on path to go 6-0 and to start off the season, will very likely be in the playoffs in some form later on this season. Of course, this is baseball. Anything can happen. It's not over till it's over. And Josh Lissy, second pitcher of the night for the Newport Gulls. Wines and deals. Low with a ball. And the count is 1-2 and two to Parker. Parker, a leadoff batter for the Mill City All Americans. They need some base runners. They trail it by two runs. They led for the better part of the ball game. The pitch swinging a foul into the goals dugout. Look out. Again, a radio format game tonight. One camera. Don't have a full two or three cameras this evening. It is finals week. And it's an all final TA crew, the Tivin High School Tigers TV crew. Pitches, a ball, low, ball two. And the Newport Gulls Television Network, um, of course, Nick Lima, the advisor and coordinator of the Newport Gulls Television Network and the Tigers TV crew, who work together to bring you these great Gulls games. The pitch, 
Swing and a miss, strike three. Another strikeout for Lacey. Let's see. Try to read my handwriting here. Hmm. I'll have to get back to you on that one, folks. Oh, that's right. Savard was court ceiling. There we go. Well, that's three strikeouts now for Laracy, who took over. For Nadozzi, back in the top of the sixth inning. Owen two's the count. On Manises, Manises, who walked in the first, and an RBI single in the third, struck out looking in the fifth, the pitch. Swinging a ground ball chopper. Schaefer looking at it. Third baseman has it. Flies the long way to first. In time, they got him another one, two, three inning. <laughs> or rather, it's the second half of the inning as I get ahead of myself here, folks. The goals would like to see a one, two, three inning here in the seventh. Getting okay, another chance to swing the bats in the bottom of the inning. Not a very strong wind here at Cardinals Field tonight. It's about 72 degrees. A beautiful night for baseball. Some rains in the area, scattered showers. The pitch swing and a foul and out of play for Manises, or rather Paula. Emmanuel Paula, ground to a 4 6 3 double play to end the first, struck out looking in the third, walked in the fifth. Paula working with a count on him of one and one. So a small crew on hand tonight, the pitch. Swing and a high fly ball to right field, not very deep, the right field looking at it. No one can make the catch as all right fielder, the second baseman, the first baseman all converge. So, Paula in at first. Now bring the tying run to the plate in the form of Cesar Aaron Gruen. Cesar doubled in the second inning. Ground to a 6-4-3 double play to end the third, walked in the fifth. Cesar stands in, awaits the pitch from Lacey and instead of throw to first. Cesar had some big hits in, la in 2004's game here at Cardinals Field. This is an interleague game. The, here's the pitch. Called strike on the inside corner. The Mill City All-Americans out of Lowell, Massachusetts of the Northern Division of the NECBL, the Newport Gulls, currently leading the Southern Division 5-0. and Is their record. Lacey goes again to first. Tried to fake the runner out there, Paula. Mill City is currently 1-0, and half a game back of Keene. The Newport Gulls, 5-0, and they've had one game incomplete. Thus far, they'll finish it later. It's an extra innings game. The pitch swung on and missed strike two. As the fire horns go off again behind me, the fire station on West Marble Street and American Scope Avenue here at Cardinals Field in Newport. Lassie. Checks the runner at first, the pitch. Outside, ball two, it's two and two. Two and two to count. Two outs. Four two our score here in the top of the seventh. Newport Gulls go back on the road tomorrow. Here's the pitch. Missing low. Ball three. The count is full. They'll play two away games before coming back here to Cardinals Field on Thursday for one day of rest. And playing a home game on Friday, going back on the road again to play seven straight. The pitch is into first, and he's scored in a rundown. Once again, the throw to second. They got him, and the inning is over. Paula caught stealing. That's the third baseman of caught stealing tonight for the Mill City All-Americans. Paula's not too happy with himself. Well, after six and a half, it's the seventh inning stretch here at Cardinals Field. Let's listen to PA announcer Don O'Hanley.
seventh inning stretch here at Cardines Field. The Newport leads at 4-2 in the Newport Gulls Television Network. Here now at Cardine Spiel as we are here now in the last half of the seventh inning. Leading it off for the Newport goals will be the leadoff batter, Steve Douglas. Douglas waits the pitch, hits outside on the outside corner, a called strike. And the next pitch, here it is, swinging a ground ball chopper. The second baseman can't get, now gets on a and Gets away, and Douglas running first. He'll go into second now, corner to run down. It looks like he held on to the ball, and he'll be tagged out. Well, a wild play there. I'm not even sure what happened as the ball disappeared in the post in front of my view. No matter where we go in this field, folks, we always have something in front of our view, I guess. Well, Douglas had a probably a guaranteed base hit. He thought the ball got away. He decided to run first and the second and it backfired. And he was tagged out. Here's Mike Affronti with one out. Takes the first pitch, a called strike. Affronti reached on error in the first, struck out in the third, reached on error in the fifth, and later scored the pitch. Sw check swing. Oh, that was right off his shoulder. And he heads back to the plate here. He's all right, shakes it off. Franny in a hold now 0-2. He didn't want to swing at that pitch. He did it anyway. Black Hewitt looks in. Uh, the 0-2. Outside ball one, it's one and two. Base is empty, one out here in the last of the seventh inning. 4-2 our score. score. The Newport Gulls have been leading it since the fifth. As a fronty fans. Well, that's just the second strikeout of the season, second of the game for a fronty. His first looking. Here comes Sean McGill. McGill had a sacrifice ground out in the first. Flew out to center in the third, had a single late to score in the fifth. Takes the first pitch, ball one. The next delivery. Outside ball two, it's two and zero. Oh. The next delivery again, swinging a foul on the plate area. Off the netting up the third base line. Two and one the count. The next pitch to McGill, swinging and ground ball, chop all the pitchers head. So the shortstop coming on, fires the first, in time, got him by a step and a half. For the other retires the side, the Newport Gulls go one, two, three in the seventh. We head to the eighth inning. Newport still leading at four to two as we continue on the Newport Gulls television Ladies network. Going right back in, Tom. All right, it's now time for that great halftime chase for the Newport Federal Gully. Well, let's chase the gully out there in center field. See about 30 or 40. Getting that one's down. Oh, no. All right, gets it right back up. And they t the object of the game is to tag gully and be the first back to the foul line. Come out from the bullpen out there. It's a tradition here at Cardines Field. And the, I guess the first few back get free tickets or something to that extent. A fun little event. Keep the crowd active. And speaking of the crowd, we do have an official attendance report now. 1,542, 1542, 1542. The attendance here this evening. That's the second highest attendance thus far. 4 2 our scores. We hit to the top of the eighth inning. And Looks like may, we may have a new pitcher warming up for the Gulls. Um, uh, no? Oh, well. 
bit, bit of indecision here. Let's see. If he turns his back, back, I can see his uniform number more clearly. Looks like number 18. 18. Hmm. Matt Payne. Now maybe Matt Payne, one of the Colts' closers, warming up now. I don't get word on that momentarily. So, 1,500 people here tonight, Cardines. That's the second largest crowd through four home games thus far on a Wednesday of last week, a military appreciation night. There were over 2,000 here at Cardines Field. Of course, the capacity of the field is now increased thanks to the complete bleachers in the left field. Now there are nearly another 1,000 seats, not quite. Probably fit seven to 800 there. I'm sure if they pack them in, they could probably fit 4,000 here in the ballpark. Now pitching for the Newport Gulls, number 18. It is, in Bailey. fact, Bailey. Griffin Bailey. So they must have switched numbers around. Griffin Bailey out of Kentucky. A new pitcher for the Newport Gulls, Griffey, uh, Griffin Bailey. Is a um, right-handed pitcher. Griffin Bailey will be pitching to Cesar Aaron Gruen of a pitch in the dirt. Ball one. Sean McGilga crossed up. Let's see if Griffin Bailey has pitched th thus far this season for the goals. And he has. He has he's 1 0 in two appearances. Must have pitched on the road trip. He has one save and 3.1 innings pitch, giving up one hit, walked one, struck out two. Pitch. Called strike. And the count is one and one. Cesar and Gruen doubled in the second, ground to a 6 4 3 double play in the third, walked in the fifth inning. Here in the eighth inning, he awaits the pitch from Bailey. Way inside. Breaking ball. Counts two and one. Bailey with a long look in now. Comes to the set, to the belt, and to the plate. A uh, call, third strike, second strike. Ha. I really need to get a better view of that scoreboard, folks, to keep track of these things. A uh, called second strike, counts even at two and two. Griffin Bailey will be looking for his called third strike here. Aaron Garuin, whose team trails by two, looking for a hit. The pitch, missing outside, ball three, and the count is full. Bailey will be one of several middle relief and closer role pitchers used by the goals this season. They tend to mix it up. Don't have one regular closer or one regular middle relief guy. They rotate everyone around. He's some of the best pitchers in collegiate baseball right here. And the pitch is swung on and missed strike three. So a strike off, strikeout to start things off for Bailey and the goals here in the eighth. Aaron Gruen fans, here comes Brown. Scott Brown, left fielder. The first baseman, Bobby Brown. Brother Bobby Brown. First baseman, as I flip my scorecard around, Scott Brown's batted for the goals. Pitches in there for coach strike. Bobby Brown, first baseman, came into this game batting 500. His average has dropped since then. He struck out three times tonight. First pitch to him is a called strike. Bailey with the pitch. On the outside corner, the called strike. Back to back strike calls. It's 0 and 2. Brown in danger of striking out for the fourth time tonight. He doesn't even fan that often. The pitch. Missing outside. Low ball one. It's one and two. Griffin Bailey, third pitcher of the night for the Newport Gulls. They have a short 4 2 lead here in the eighth. The pitch. Missing inside, ball two, and the count is even at two and two. Oh, brisk breeze blowing in now. It 
behind the plate. Bailey with the 2-2 two -two pitch. Missing outside ball three and the count's full yet again. Outfield very deep. Brown does have some power. Bailey with the payoff pitch. Swinging a foul off the screen. Hit the post in front of us. In front of me, I should say. Again, once again, small crew tonight, but we're getting the job done. Bailey didn't have much of a free game show, but that's all right, folks. We're all volunteers. We're all working hard to bring as much of these games to you as we can. Almost missed the first inning tonight, but getting hit in time. The pitch. Called third strike. He struck him out. Back-to-back -back strikeouts for Griffin Bailey. So... Uh, no one bites the dust. And here it comes. Herrera. Edgar Herrera, left fielder for the Mill City All-Americans. Edgar Herrera struck out in the second inning. Reached your own error and later scored in the fourth. Struck out in the fifth. The pitch, swing and a miss, strike one. Well, since coming into this game in the sixth inning, rather, it's just getting to the game now. Pitch outside ball one. Since the first relief pitcher, Lairsey, came into the game in the sixth inning, the All-Americans have not scored. Nine straight outs recorded, including along the baselines. Seen Five strikeouts from relief pitchers. The pitch. Strike two on the inside corner, and he's in a hole one and two. Aaron Gruen struck out swinging. Brown struck out looking. Herrera stands in. He's behind one and two. Two outs. Top of the eighth inning. 4 2 our score. The pi pitch is lined in the right field. That will be foul. It's a foul ball fouled by about two feet off the line. So we'll do it all again. One and two the count. And Arara wants a new bat. The umpire gets some new baseballs. Empire, the umpire. Scott Davis, home plate umpire. And Tom Mish calling plays around the bases. Oh, still waiting for Herrera to get a bat here, so a brief delay. Call a, t a TV timeout. Make them make you folks at home think they'll actually take a TV timeout for us. We do what we can. Our camera guy up there is clapping along. Dun, 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 dun. All right, not filling yet time. He's back and he's got a new bat. And he levels it. Herrera stands in. Griffin Bailey with the one-two pitch from the belt to the plate. Swing and a foul ball up the third base line. Once again, he stays alive. Wind picking up a little bit now as it is very dark here at Cardane's Field. Not quite nighttime yet. Once again, Bailey with the one, two pitch. Swing and there's a drive, the left field, left fielder coming on, can't make the, can't field it. It's off of his glove and Herrera in at first with a two out double. That two out single, that'll bring the tying run to the plate in the form of Savard. Savard has had a game tonight. He walked in the first inning, had an RBI double in the fourth inning, and single was later caught stealing in the sixth. It's two for two. Fielder, David, Savard. David Savard stands in at the plate, runner at first. Go ahead, run comes to the on deck circle. Griffin Bailey's pitch, check swing, it's a called strike, and it's 0 1. Outfield playing deep. 
infield. Flanks about the pole. Sally, Bailey. Throws in. Swing and a ground ball chopper right by him. That gets to the shortstop in front. He finds a long way to first in time, and the inning is over. He got him by half a step, folks, at first. And Franny is another good defensive play. Really has been doing a great job here at Cardines. For the Newport goals in the role of shortstop and the role of a hitter. Michael Franny gets it done again. We go to the last half of the eighth. Last chance for the Newport goals to pad their lead a little bit as we continue on the Newport goals television network with the score four to two Newport. Church to lead off here for the Newport goals in the uh, last half of the eighth inning. Eighth inning. And there's a new pitcher out on the mound for the All-Americans. And during the bumper music there, I seem to have missed his name. Church. Mike Church leading it off. I'll get you his, the pit, new pitcher's name in a moment. He is a right-handed pitcher, stands in the mound. Whoa. He's got quite a delivery. And I think Church is a little bit dumbfounded there. He's got the um, the low underhanded delivery. Wow. The next delivery, that's grounded to the first baseman who flipped to the pitcher in time. Church retired. After Brown, who's now coming to the plate, it'll be Jaron Sinski. So this new pitcher is quite the pitcher. He'll be facing Scott Brown here. Brown flew out in the second, reached on a field choice in the fourth, had a sacrifice fly in the fifth. He's ahead now, 1-0. The next delivery from the new pitcher from the Mill City All-Americans. Swinging a pop fly out of play. See if our camera guy can catch another shot. We don't have any communication between anyone in the crew tonight. Well, separated, unfortunately. Our communication system is also down for the evening, along with our graphics generator. We'll prove that for the next game. The ne next door from the hurler is line right to the second baseman, who made a nice leaping catch to save a single. So two down. Here comes Jaron Sinski. Right fielder, Brian Jaronsinski. Brian Jaronsinski. Stands in the plate, the pitch. Outside ball one. Well, deliver, I wish I knew his name. I missed it when the public address announcer announced it. I don't have a full lineup for the All-Americans. I left it on my printer, folks. That's my fault. The pitch is in on the inside corner. I call it strike. It's one and one. Two outs. Here in the last half of the eighth inning. The next delivery. That pitch almost hit his head. It went all the way to the backstop. A wild pitch. Well, when you have a delivery like that, everyone now and then and one will get away from you. You know, I doubt he was throwing at Jaron since he has no reason to. So Brian now stands in at first. Wendell. Wendell, here's the throw to first. Not in time. Wendell stands in. He's hit by a pitch in the second. Struck out in the fourth. Grounded out in the seventh. The pitch. In there for a called strike. The delivery on this pitcher is almost underhanded. It's like watching a softball game. One in a hundred pitches pitch like that. The pitch. Like a curveball outside and high. No way to tell, folks. The balls he's throwing have a lot of movement on him. Why he's here in the NECBL. The next pitch. 
up, up and away again, ball two. Same pitch. Wendell looking to help the Newport Gulls pad their lead a little bit. They lead it four to two. Here in the last half of the eighth, the pitch. Swing and a foul back and out of play on the West Mile ball. Straight over by my car. And once again, I missed it, folks. Oh, it's nine o'clock. As the fire station horn tells us. The next pitch to Wendell. Missing with a ball. And the hit is Rather, the count is full now, three and two. Three and two, the count on window. Runner at first. Two outs, the three two is fouled to the backstop area. So a full count on Andy Wendell. Runner at first. The payoff pitch. Swing and a foul over by me again, right? That's another ball that probably would have hit me or very close to me had there not been a screen in front of me to protect me. See, up in the right field press box, we don't have a screen to protect us. We've had balls fly all around that press box or on my head. The 3-2 is fouled over the bleachers and into the parking lot across the street. There, my car is, as always, precariously parked. It's only been hit twice in one game during the final regular season home game of the 2004 season. It was hit twice in that game. Hasn't been hit in any other game in two years. The pitch, swing and a line shot, base hit in the right field. Jaron Sixty rounding second. He'll be on his way to third and slides in. He's out at third. Jaron Sinski taken down at third and that's the out that retires the side. The Newport goal strand a runner. We play eight full at Cardine's Field. We go to the ninth. Last chance for the Mill City All-Americans next as we continue on the second season of the Newport Gulls Television Network. Back here now at Cardine's Field. Here's the first pitch of the inning. It's on the inside corner, a called strike to the leadoff batter here in the inning for the Mill City All-Americans. It is Brown. The next pitch is inside for one of the counts, even at one and one. It's Brown, Santos, and Parker due up here in the ninth. The next pitch, swinging a foul to the screen, and the count is one and two. The next delivery, up and away, ball two, and the count's even at two and two. Brown, Santos, and Parker do up here in the ninth. Newport Gulls looking to extend their streak to six and oh on this still young season. Griffin Bailey with the pitch, missing ball three, and the count is full. Looks in for the sign, the pitch. Swing and a miss, he struck him out. So one man down here in the ninth. Well, the last three home games here at Cardinals Field, we've seen some crazy antics in the ninth inning. On opening night, the Newport Goals took a 12-4 lead to the ninth. They won that game 12-10. On the second night, which was military appreciation night, is the pitch, the Santos, it's in there called strike. The Newport Gulls took a six to three lead in the night and they won the game six to five on a wild play at the plate. The next pitch to Santos, swing and a foul out of play. In that game, the opposing team had the bases loaded and up front he, who was a cutoff man, got a, caught a cutoff throw from center field, which had already throw after the base hit that had scored two runs. Here's the next pitch. Outside with the ball, it's one and two. 
and then fired a bullet to the plate to retire the third potential run of that hit, which was the tying run. And there were two outs, so that ended the ball game, a wild ending to that game, the pitch outside with the ball. Then on Thursday night of last week, on the it was a very foggy night here at Cardines Field. You could barely see the outfield, but they played the full game out. The Newport Golds went to the ninth, losing 7-3, to three, and they came back to win it. 8-7 to seven in the ninth inning. Thanks to Afrani's walk-off single. Here's the pitch, and it's over to first. For the inning, second out. Here comes Parker. Parker will be the last chance for the Mill City All-Americans here at Cardines Field in 2005 in the regular season. Several Mill City players may be back here at Cardines for the All-Star game. In this game here tonight, Parker, short, short, uh, Michael Parker struck out. Looking in the first inning, the pitch. Right down the middle of the court strike. He doubled in the third. Grand out three to one in the fourth. Struck out swinging in the seventh. Parker will be standing in now. Tying running the on deck circle for the All, All Americans. Two outs. Top of the ninth inning. Newport Coles leading at four to two. Griffin Bailey with the 0 1 pitch. Ball one outside. It's one and one. Parker, last hope for the All Americans. Bailey hoping to avoid the ninth inning antics we've seen. Three nights in a row here at Cardinals Field. This is the fourth home game of the season. The Newport Goals are 5-0. The All-Americans are 1-0. Look, the Goals hoping to go 6-0 tonight. The pitch. Swing and a shot to right field. That ball will be... Back here now at Cardines Field in Newport, one final time. The Newport Goals with the victory tonight over the Mill City All-Americans. 4-2 the final score in tonight's ball game. Newport extends their unbeaten streak to 6-0 overall. And of course, they'll be heading out on a two-game road trip tomorrow for a day off on Thursday. Newport will be making up the final innings of the extra inning game tomorrow, after, tomorrow evening before going to the North Adams Steeple Cats on Wednesday. We'll have the next home game for you on the Newport Gold Television Network upcoming next Friday. And of course, we'll have the rest of the season for you on the NGTN. I'd like to thank all those who've made our broadcast possible. The executive producer of Newport Gold Baseball is Steve Andre. Our director tonight doing a fine job as always, Tom Lemer. On our camera, Ryan Bettencourt doing an outstanding job tonight. A very small crew on hand tonight. All volunteers, all working very hard to bring these games to you. Newport Golds win it tonight 4-2. They're 6-0 in the league, 6-0 overall. Newport goes off to a great start here in 2005. We'll have many games for you to come on the NGTN. I'm Nick Lima. Until our next broadcast, so long, everybody.